A theme of iPadOS 15 is being able to interact with your device faster. I'm really excited for this release because there's a lot of quality of life improvements for iPad users. So let's see what's new. The iPad is now playing catch up to the iPhone's customizable home screen. You're now able to place widgets anywhere on the home screen. There's a new large widget size that I'm particularly excited about that is really interesting to use with apps like Files. Because the Files widget got updated, it's no longer just showing recent items that were added to the Files app. You can now customize which location it shows. So this basically checks off my wish list item of wanting to have files and folders on the home screen. Because now I can just throw my documents folder in there, downloads, the LumaFusion user media folder, those locations that I wanted to have access to on my home screen, I can have access to them right from the widget. But there is a casualty of having these widgets anywhere on the home screen. Apps are now spaced out again. A big deal with iPadOS 14 was about using space appropriately. Now app icons are more spaced out again. And I'm kind of bummed about this. I liked the first home screen page of iPadOS 14 when you had the widgets on the left side and all the apps were a lot closer together. Now, if you went past the first page, the apps would be spaced out again because you didn't have that widget column. Um, so I kind of see this as a casualty, but I'm happy to have widgets anywhere. Like that is a trade-off I'd be willing to make if that's just the way the home screen layout is when it comes to iPad. But a bonus is the dock can now hold more apps. So on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, it can now hold up to 17 apps as opposed to the 15 apps previously. So that's cool. I'm not entirely sure what the total is on the smaller iPads. I only have the beta running on my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Uh, I'll be putting it on my 11 inch one later on in the summer. But for right now, that is my control iPad to make sure I have at least a stable computer laying around. Another addition is the app library. Now this works like the iPhone. You can swipe all the way to the right and see the app library right there. But there's also now an icon in the bottom right hand corner of the dock. If you tap that, it'll launch the app library and you can pick your apps from there. That is a nice touch. I'm really glad that the icon is in the dock and it's not just swiping all the way to the right. This makes it easier to access when you're in an app already. One downside to using the app library is apps are automatically placed into categories. Now the developers sometimes pick these categories because their app will perform better in a certain category over the category that personally I think that app belongs into. So I would like a feature to basically override what app goes into a specific folders category. Um, that would just be a nice touch. Another feature that the iPad is getting that the iPhone got last year is the ability to hide home screens. So if you long press and go into the jiggle mode, you can tap the dots at the bottom and you can see all your home screens and you can turn off the ones that you don't want. That plays into the next category. That is the new focus modes. And focus modes are basically do not disturbed, but cranked all the way up to 11. With these, users can use profiles. They can create custom ones or use some built-in ones. Uh, the ones that I'm using right now are for work, filming, personal time, fitness, and sleep. When these modes are activated, you can choose which apps and people are allowed to send you notifications. So this is basically a way to create funnels for the different parts of your life. So for example, my work mode. Productivity apps are allowed to send me notifications. This is, you know, if, if one of my VIP contacts just sent me an email, I can see that. Or if there's some collaboration thing happening in notes, I can see that. Uh, but I don't allow any messages or anything like that to come through. One feature you can do is you can turn off badges completely. Now for the work mode, I leave badges on so I can see if somebody sent me messages, but I'm just not getting push notifications all the time. I'm in some pretty active group chats and some text message threads that just get messages throughout the day quite often. So when I'm you know, just sitting down writing, I don't want those messages coming through, but I can go down there and just check to see if I've got any new messages. And if I'm at a good stopping point, I can go in and see what those are. A nice feature is when you have a focus mode enable, it'll show that in do not disturb for the person that is sending you a message. So if I have my work mode on, it'll show that for the person sending me a message. So they'll know then that I won't get a notification right away from them. Uh, and if it's an emergency, they can force that through. 
And a nice touch about this is third-party apps will be able to update to support this as well. So if you use other messaging apps besides messages, uh, this won't be limited to just that. And when you enable a focus mode, it's not just for one device, it syncs across all of your devices. So if I'm working on my iPad here and I turn on the work mode, it'll sync to my iPhone as well. So my iPhone isn't just going off with notifications all the time while my iPad is staying silent. When setting up these modes, you can pick which home screens are actually shown. So you can limit it to specific home screens for specific modes. So for example, again, with my work mode, I have a work home screen. This will show me widgets for like my task manager and calendar, and then apps like LumaFusion and Ferrite and Affinity Photo, stuff I use for work. But if I switch over to my personal mode, it'll show me entertainment apps, streaming services, games that I'm playing on my iPad and things like that. So this is kind of a nice way when I wanna just work, I can just see my work stuff. When I wanna, you know, have some downtime and watch a movie, TV show, play a game, whatever, I can just see that stuff. And then for my sleep mode, I have a blank home screen page, so it's just on that. So if I go and grab my iPad when I should be sleeping, there's nothing on the home screen. So when setting up home screens now, you can actually take a single app and add it to multiple pages. Well, you can actually take a single app and add it to the same page multiple times, but I don't know why anyone would actually wanna do that besides for the meme of it. So what this means is I could take the TV app and put it on my work page and my personal page as well, but really I just want it on my personal page. While you can trigger these focus modes manually, and personally that's the way I've been doing it, you can turn on a smart activation feature. This will learn when you're turning these on based on location and time. That's great if you work outside of your home. I work at my home, so what I was finding is work mode would be triggered at weird times, personal mode would be triggered in the middle of the day. So like, I just turn those off and I'm just manually triggering them now. Focus modes are also hooked into shortcuts in a couple of ways. So there's a new automation action. So whenever you manually trigger a focus mode or if a smart activation triggers a focus mode, a shortcuts automation can run so you can have actions that happen. So for example, whenever I trigger my work mode, I have it run my time tracking shortcut. So I can just automatically start time tracking or when I turn off work mode, I can just stop my time tracking. Multitasking got a big overhaul in iPad OS 15, and I like what Apple did here. So first off, the old multitasking is still there. So if you would drag and drop an app from like the dock or search or something like that, that is still 100% possible. That did not go away. You can still put those in split view or slide over. And the same thing with content as well. But now there's a more button at the very top of every single app that opens. If you tap that, you'll see a few different options. So the first one is full screen mode. So if you already have an app in split view, it'll take that app and make it full screen on the iPad. The second option will take the app and shift it all the way to the right side. It will then reveal the home screen so you can pick an app from the home screen, the app library, or even spotlight to open in split view. And then the third option is slide over. So if you have two apps open in split view, it'll take whichever one you pick and put it in slide over. And if you only have one app open at the time, it'll take that app, shift it to the right side, allow you to pick an app to be in the background and then put that app that you picked in slide over. Now, I still really believe slide over should exist on the home screen. And there was gonna be a couple of things that we talk about in just a bit that kind of further support that. For apps like calculator apps and two-factor authentication apps and like those little utilities that I think could just benefit from being able to live in a slide over state that they don't need to be full screen apps. I think apps should have an option of just being able to live in slide over. In this more button here, you may see a fourth option every once in a while, and this is for center window. Now, right now in the beta, the app that supports this is mail. So when you're composing a message, you get a window that hovers over the mail app. Now this is a center window. You can hit the more button at the top and put that in split view or slide over if you want. But the center window is meant for something that you're working on for a minute and then you can just be done with it. In the app switcher, you can now put apps in split view as well as taking them out of split view also. It's just nice to be able to see all of your windows kind of laid out and just be able to put them in pairs. 
The app switcher also shows slide over apps as well now on the right hand side. I think this is nice. They're not separated anymore. Slide over still has its own app switcher if you swipe up from the bottom on a slide over app. When opening an app that has multiple instances already open, you're gonna see what's called the shelf at the bottom now. Now this is where you can get all the different instances of that app. You can tap between them to jump between them quickly. It's meant to just kind of be able to quickly manage the different windows of apps you have open. You can also create new instances of that app from there. And if you don't have multiple instances of that app already open, you can just tap on that app icon a second time to get the shelf. When picking an app to go into split view, the system always grabs the latest instance that you've used, despite whether the fact that that instance of that app is already in split view with another app or the same app. So a lot of times this can break pairs of apps you already have set up. Personally, I don't like this because I'll have different app pairs set up for different projects, whether it's research or just like goofing around on something or whatever, like I'll have these different pairs set up. But if I go and set up a new, you know, split view instance, it could break up one of those pairs. So one thing that I think should happen is when creating a split view pair and you tap on the icon before putting it in split view, it should bring up the shelf, allow you to either pick an instance of that app or create a new instance of it. This would fix that issue of breaking those pairs up and kind of help you manage all these multiple windows of apps you have open already. One thing I'm really excited about with split view and slide over is there's now finally shortcuts actions for these. So now there's shortcuts actions for putting apps in split view and putting apps in slide over. Last year, the Apple Pencil got a lot of cool upgrades and this year it's the keyboard's turn. Now there is full keyboard navigation, meaning you can use the tab and arrow keys to navigate and the inner key to select things. Now this works in apps, but it also works on the home screen as well. The keyboard shortcut menu also got completely revamped. It's a lot closer to the Mac menu bar now. In fact, if an app is a Catalyst app, it just uses the menu bar from the Mac to display all those shortcuts. I really like this. I use a lot of creative apps that have a ton of shortcuts and the old style of keyboard shortcut menu uh, was kind of hard to navigate and find exactly what you want. Now everything's broken up into categories and it's a lot easier. Also, when you hold down the command key, you can actually just start typing to search for something specific. Part of me thinks this should just be a permanent fixture in an app at the top, kind of like it is on the Mac, just because when you're in tablet mode, it would be really nice to be able to get to these shortcuts from this menu bar. Now you can hold down the globe key and see system wide keyboard shortcuts, which I am very excited about. Now, some of these were in previous versions of iPad OS, but a lot of them are brand new. Uh, a quick side note, if you don't have a globe key on your keyboard, so for example, my mechanical keyboard does not have a globe key, you can go into settings, general keyboard, hardware keyboard, modifier keys, and replace a specific modifier key to be the globe key. So for example, I swapped out my caps lock key to be a globe key. In the global shortcuts menu, there are a ton of options, including my long requested Siri shortcut button. Now, not shortcuts, shortcuts, but a shortcut to trigger Siri from the keyboard. So I've been pairing this with type to Siri to play music, to run shortcuts, uh, to answer questions, do quick web searches, things like that. There's now also options for uh, showing the dock, app library, notification center, and more. But the power of these global system-wide keyboard shortcuts is really for multitasking. You can now put apps in split view by either hitting control globe left or right arrow, depending on what side you want the app to be on. It'll then reveal the home screen and you could just do it just like the new multitasking system. Globe plus backslash will reveal the slide over app and then you can cycle through those apps using globe command backslash. And then with globe F, you can make an app full screen. You can also hold down the globe key and use the left and right arrow keys to jump between previously opened apps. Globe down will reveal the shelf and globe up will reveal the app switcher. There's a ton of keyboard shortcuts in here. So when you get access to iPadOS 15, I highly recommend just holding down that globe key and seeing what's there. 
But the nice thing about iPad OS 15 is it doesn't matter in which mode you're using an iPad. It doesn't matter if you're using it with a tablet or the magic keyboard or a mechanical keyboard or whatever. You can easily trigger multitasking from anywhere in the system now. So there's a lot of power behind these multitasking keyboard shortcuts. It's just gonna take a minute to memorize them all. But between the full keyboard access and the new keyboard shortcuts, when you're typing away on a hardware keyboard on the iPad, you shouldn't have to take your hands off the keyboard anymore. You should be able to navigate throughout any app or the OS using that full keyboard access. And if you need to put something in split view or slide over or, or you know trigger a shortcut or whatever, you should be able to do that right from the keyboard now. Notes got one of my favorite new features in iPadOS 15, and that's Quick Note. When using the Apple Pencil or your finger, you can swipe in from the bottom right hand corner and you now get this notes overlay. It kind of reminds me of a post-it note. From here, you can type out a note or handwrite a note with an Apple Pencil, which this will pair really nice with a Paperlike, a channel sponsor. It's a textured screen protector that gives you feedback when using the Apple Pencil on the iPad, much closer to pen and paper. Link in the description below. You can also trigger Quick Note by hitting Globe Q or the Control Center icon. So again, no matter what way you're using the iPad, you can trigger this feature. This window can be resized, dragged around, moved, wherever you wanna do it. It's really nice. It's just a floating window, very much like picture in picture. If you have multiple Quick Notes, you can swipe on them left or right to get to the previous notes in the Quick Notes folder. If you have something open that has some content, like a web page or an email or something like that, and you trigger Quick Note, you'll see a name of that content at the top, then a plus button. You can tap that plus button and it'll take that and add a link to it in that note. This is super nice. So whenever you're going back to that note, you can just tap on that and it'll jump right to that email, uh, web page, reminder project, whatever. I really like Quick Note. I've been using it a lot throughout the day. And how I've been using it is I, I use it to gather thoughts if I come across something that's interesting when I'm using iPad OS 15 or iOS 15 or watch OS or whatever, I'll just jot it down really quickly. And then in the morning when I come into my office, I will take that information and I'll put it in my bigger notes research file. Notes also got a couple of other features as well. You could now add tags to your notes. This is nice for big research projects. So I have a tag that's called OS updates that's gathering all the stuff from my iPad OS, iOS and watch OS research into one place. So I can just kind of reference that. Uh, you can also create smart folders using these tags. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between creating these smart folders and just tapping one of those tags down at the bottom on notes, but it's there if you really prefer folders. There's also some new collaboration features as well. You can now mention somebody in a note so they'll get a push notification saying, hey, so-and-so mentioned you and you can see what they need. Um, and there's now a new activity feed so you can see what changes other people have made to a note. Kind of just nice touches. The Files app got some nice quality of life improvements. The first one is there's now a progress bar when transferring files. Thank you. Oh. I, I transfer a lot of large data files when doing videos and stuff like that. And before I was just like, okay, it'll finish when it finished. But now I have an estimate of when it'll finish. So that's nice. When using a mouse or a trackpad, you can click and drag to select multiple files, just like if you were on a Mac or even a PC. This isn't something I expected, but it's very much a welcome feature. Also, I will say overall, Files feels a lot more stable, even on beta two of iPadOS 15, as opposed to iPadOS 14. So that's an improvement. Like it feels a lot better. It feels a lot more sturdy. But the big news when it comes to files is all the new files actions that are built into shortcuts. So I'm really excited for these. I have some interesting ideas on how to use these in the future. Uh, so, you know, stay tuned. One of the biggest overall design changes just across the board from everything Apple announced is in Safari. And I'm not a huge fan, to be honest. Um, I have less shock when using Safari now as opposed to the, you know, the day the betas were released. By the way, I installed the beta like 15 minutes after the keynote. Like I had to have been one of the first people. It was, <laughs> I was right on the ball. Um, but ever since then, the design change just has not clicked with me. I've been, so I've been using it for a month now or almost a month now, and it just has not clicked at all. 
So everything is focused around tabs now. Now I love tabs. I'm a big fan of tabs. I always have a ton of tabs open. But the problem with this is when you tap on the tab, it expands and that is now the URL and the search bar. So it makes all of the other tabs really small. So it's hard to see what else you have open. So what I've been finding that I've been doing is that fact that I don't see I have like another tab with my website open or YouTube studio open. So I'll go and open another tab and open that again. So now I have two tabs with YouTube studio open and it's just not efficient. The other issue is if you're using a trackpad and you start to hover over tabs and once the tabs start to get really small, the trackpad, the cursor will want to snap to the X button to close tabs. I have closed so many tabs I did not mean to. Luckily, there's always Command Shift T, but still. In all these settings, the options for a web page are now hidden behind a more button that's in that unified URL and search bar. This includes things like refresh, reload, the share sheet, and a lot more. And I personally think this is just too much to have behind one button. It's hard to navigate because you're like, okay, I know everything is behind this button. So you tap it and it's like, okay, where's it at? And you're scrolling and I always miss it. Like adding bookmarks, that button right there, for some reason, I can never find it. I always have to scroll to the bottom, scroll back up, and then scroll again to find it. It's I don't know why, I can't find that button. I am totally willing to give these Safari changes a shot, but I've been using them for almost a month now and they're just not clicking with me at all. Um, if I had the option, I would go back to the old Safari right now. But one Safari change that I am really excited about is extensions. So developers are going to be able to make extensions for iPad and iPhone Safari now. It's not just gonna be limited to the Mac. And I'm really curious to see what developers do. In fact, developers, if you're watching this video and you're working on anything, not even just extensions related, anything for iPad OS or iOS 15 or even watch OS, get in contact with me. My business contact is down in the description below. Shortcuts got some really big, nice changes that I'm really excited about. Uh, the editor got some excellent changes. So actions are now more compact, so you can see more on the screen. This is really beneficial when you're building shortcuts on your iPhone, but I would say it's also a welcome change for the iPad as well. Anytime you could see more stuff on screen, two thumbs up. You can now collapse sections. So say you have a menu with a bunch of actions in there, you can collapse that menu and then keep working on your shortcut. When you're building large shortcuts, this will make navigating it just so much easier. When you have a section complete, collapse it, move on to the next. There's also two new automation types. The first one I mentioned already, it's around focus, and the other one is sound recognition. There is also a bunch of new actions as well. I mentioned some already, but a few key ones that I'm excited about is extract text from image, so OCR, make spoken audio from text, get text from PDF, split PDF, make an image from a PDF page, get on screen content, stop and output, this is for debugging, and quite a few more. I'm gonna be making a dedicated video to all the shortcut changes and stuff over the summer, so be sure to subscribe. Okay, so this video is going really long, but there's a couple of key features I just wanna rattle off really quickly. There's now a low power mode for the iPad. This works just like the iPhone, but it, if you have an iPad with a high refresh display, it's gonna turn that off so it goes back down to 60 Hertz, uh, which is just a nice touch. High refresh rate eats up battery life, so if you're in low power mode, why not turn that off? In photos, you can now see EXIF data of a photo. This is gonna be great for photographers if you wanna see what camera you shot something on, lens, focal length, uh, aperture, whatever, that's all there. Throughout the OS, you may see this live text icon now. You'll be able to extract text from photos and screenshots, and then you can copy and paste this info wherever you want it to go. But in a case of something like a phone number or an address, you can just tap on it to call it or get directions to it. As always, I recommend caution before installing the betas. These are betas. So just because one version is stable or sounds good or sounds good for a couple of people doesn't mean the next version is gonna be stable. It's a roller coaster. So I don't recommend installing it on any devices you use for work or any devices you need to be reliable. If you've got a backup iPhone or iPad just laying around, go for it. This is just an overview of iPadOS 15's like core features, but I'm gonna be back in the fall when 
when iPadOS 15 is officially out with my big walkthrough video that goes into detail of all this stuff. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button and have a great day.